Hey there, my name's Ben McEwen for AETutes.com. Today we're going to be creating what I call a light scroll. Let's take a look. So this effect may seem pretty familiar, because some people have created it with a still camera and waving a couple of lights around everywhere, kind of like creating a stop frame animation. But in my opinion, in After Effects we get a much smoother and much nicer looking result. So let's jump into After Effects and get started. First of all we need to get our footage inside of After Effects to start working. To do this we go File, Import, File. I've already got my file in here, so we'll continue to the next step. Click and drag our footage onto the Make New Composition button. So you can see here our footage is automatically placed inside a new composition with the same settings, same frames per second, same everything. Big time saver. Next, we'll create a new solid. To do this, go Layer, New, Solid. Or you can use our shortcut, Control y now it doesn't really matter what color we use, I'm just using Magneto and click make comp size and OK. Now for the actual streak of light I'm using a particle generator called Trap Code Particular and in my opinion it is the best particle plugin you can get for After Effects. If you don't have it you can get a trial from www.trapcode.com or you can buy the full plugin. So we'll type in here Particular, here we go, and click and drag it onto our Magneto Solid. Now before we go any further I'm going to name our layers. So we'll click on them, hit enter, and we'll type in footage for this one, and particles for this one. It's pretty important to keep your uh, project files really organized, uh, it just helps you later on down the track when you have multiple layers and you've got no idea what they are. So when we scrub through the timeline, you can see our particles are kind of spewing out of this point in the center. So we need to make this point follow our finger. So to do this, we're going to go Layer, New, Null Object. And we'll drag this over to our finger. OK. Now make sure this is selected and hit P to reveal our position properties. And we'll click on our particles, toggle down our emitter controls, hold Alt, and click position X, Y. And I'll drag this up to give us a little bit more room. So we'll click in here, delete that, click on our pick whip and hold it and drag it up to the word position on our null object. And release and just click out. So essentially what this is doing is getting the position X, Y, so pretty much the position of our null object on our particles and linking it to the position of our null object. Now I know that sounds a little bit confusing, but in the long run it makes our work much easier since we're going to be linking quite a few things to our null object here. So we'll click on the stopwatch for position on our null object, which will create a keyframe and start us off animating. So I'll zoom in a little bit, hit page down, reposition, we're trying to position this little point here, the top left corner of our null object on our finger. Just dragging around, pressing page down for next frame, and clicking and dragging. And we want to do this for the whole project, uh, the whole clip, should I say. So if we keep clicking and dragging, we can turn the visibility for our particles off if it gets in the way. And we just want to do this like I said before, for the whole clip. Okay, so you can see our null object is sticking to my finger here pretty well. If we turn on our particles, now you can see it's kind of spraying around and going crazy. I mean, this might be what you want, but for this tutorial, it's not. So let's go ahead and fix that. We'll set our particles per second to 2000 which you can see it's created a lot more particles and it might slow down your system a little bit. We'll keep scrolling down, set our velocity to zero, our velocity random to zero, and our velocity from motion to five. So pretty much this means everything's not gonna go crazy but we still maintain a little bit of motion and it 
keep some life in our particles here. So we'll keep scrolling down, set the life to one second. Keep going down, sphere feather, we'll keep it 50. Size, we'll set to one also. Keep going down, and we want to lower our opacity just enough to keep it solid, but so we can see through the tiniest bit. So about 65 looks good to me. So now if we scrub through from the start, we can see it's looking pretty cool. Now, except one problem, when it goes behind, we still have our particles on top. That's a problem. So how are we going to fix it? I'll show you now. Go layer, new, solid. We'll choose a different color this time. Let's say orange. Click OK, click make comp size and hit OK again. Now again, we'll name these matte and finger track. Now we'll drag our matte just above the particles. Turn the visibility off, click our pen tool, and we just want to draw around the arm here, just like this. Okay, and we'll just toggle down the arrow and get to our mask properties. And if we set the visibility on for our mat, we can see we've got a big orange color up here, which isn't what we want but we need it to kind of visualize our blur along the edge here. So we need to unlink our mask feather and on our X axis only, just drag it up a little bit. So you can see it softens out the edge and makes it blend in much more. That's pretty good. Second thing, we need to click the stopwatch next to mask path. So that's set to keyframe here and we're ready to animate. So we can turn off the visibility for the mat and once again, using page up and page down, just track here, whoops, and make sure we're covering up only this, uh, this part of the line. So I'll go through this and pause the recording. Okay, so now I've rotoscoped my body and made sure to cover up uh, the parts of the particles that are covering my arms. But now we need to translate this data uh, to tell our particles layer not to display when uh, it kind of intersects this area. To do this, we're going to set um, track mat to alpha inverted mat. If you can't see this setting, hit toggle switches on modes down here, or you can just hit F4. Now I'm going to take a little bit of time to explain what it's actually doing because a lot of people don't actually know what they do and therefore don't really understand it and can't use it to its full potential. So what I'm going to do is just switch off all the visibility, turn on the visibility for our mat and hit Alt 4. So now we're viewing the alpha channel of our mat layer. So what an alpha channel is is an image based of just black, whites, and gray pixels. So you can see we've got the black here, the white, and the grays in between where the feathering occurs, just to make sure the lights fall blends in. So what this means is everything that's black is completely transparent, everything that's white is completely opaque, and all the grays and in-betweens are kind of the semi-transparent parts. Now what our track mat down here is doing is taking the alpha mat, which is this, uh, and since it's inverted, it's flipping the blacks and the whites. So if I demonstrate this, put an invert on here and set it to alpha. So pretty much it's just doing this. So everything that's white is visible and everything that's black, you can't see at all. So if I take this invert back off, hit Alt 4 to go back to our RGB and turn this off and turn these two back on. So you can see, if you can imagine our mat again, all the white areas here are visible and in here was our little black box and that's the parts that are invisible. Now that was a 
pretty darn quick explanation and I'm sure it's going to be pretty confusing to some of you so I'd advise you go onto Google and have a look for it because it's pretty useful information. Anyway, back to the tutorial. Next step is to make this streak here glow. So to do this I'm going to duplicate